Alright guys, Wet Movie 1 back here again for another DVD Blu-ray update. Most of them are Blu-rays in this one today. Uh, but let's start off right here with one from Warner Brothers and that's The Apparition. Uh, this is this movie's pretty much about a, a couple of like paranormal investigators kind of people, like people that want to conjure up spirits. And uh, there's like a group of friends sitting around the table uh, looking at this one wooden statue and like trying to conjure up a spirit. And then in the meantime, there's like, you know, people document, there's a person documenting what's going on. And in the meantime, this, a spirit comes in and like ends up sucking a girl into a wall. And like all this, all this madness happens. And that's, 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 that's the opening of the movie. And then it cuts, you know, later in, into the future where uh, this couple is like, is like sort of moving into a house. And, you know, weird stuff starts happening. Like, you know, the appar apparition starts, you know, coming on. They're trying to figure out what's going on and why it's in their house. And... You know, why these different things are, like, in, you know, on their walls. Like, you know, like, big, like, hives or, like, big, like, you know, like, you know, moldish type of things are on their wall. They're trying to figure out what's going on. I actually kind of like this movie. It kind of felt like, um, the people, the people that made this movie really love, like, Japanese or, you know, Chinese uh, horror films like The Grudge or, uh, you know, Juwan and stuff like that. Uh, you know what I mean? That's just the way you see some, just the way you, how you see the apparition sometimes. You know, like how they, they move, you know, how things move. I just have a feeling the people that made this are super fans of uh, Japanese cinema or Chinese cinema or whatever. That, that's what I, that's the style I, I was getting from watching this, uh, of, of the horror elements. I liked a couple of the scenes where, like, things are flashing. It's like, doof, doof, ah, ah, you know? But it also kind, it kind of felt like th there was a lot more that, I don't know, it just felt like there's something missing in it. You know, I liked it because I liked, you know... Uh, paranormal kind of movies, you know, where like things are happening, you know, is that a ghost? Ooh, you know, things like that. I, I really do dig things like that, especially recently. I did enjoy it, so uh, I recommend a high rental on this one right here, The Apparition. Uh, see right here, the next one right here is from Magnet, and that is VHS, uh, a new anthology horror film. It's like, what, three or four different little stories, and uh, with, with one wrapped around it, which the one that wraps around it was okay. You know, it kind of felt like it needed to continue. Like, it just sort of, like, dun, dun, it kind of just ends. But there's, like, different stories in this. Like, there's one with, uh, people, of course, people going into the woods, and then something crazy is going on in the woods. And, uh, one of the segments in here is directed by Ty West. You guys all know from the Innkeepers and stuff like that. And, and House of the Devil, sorry. When you put this in, if you're not a fan of, like, found footage kind of movies, wait, like, 10, 15 minutes, okay? Because I was watching it, and the first, like, like 10... 10, 12 minutes, I was just like, what's going on here? You know, like, uh, something needs to happen. You know what I mean? I was sitting there. But then after, after you get past, like, the first 12 minutes or so, things start picking up, and it's like, whoa, holy crud. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's really crazy. The, the first story's cool, except for, like, the first couple minutes of it. But then it, it, it gradually gets better and better, especially the, the last story of this, where uh, these kids, uh, or not, not kids, but, you know, young adults, are uh, going to this Halloween party, and they, you know, they, they're they're going to this house, and the house is kind of the house is they walk into is empty. They're like they're, they're trying to find the people in the house, and then all this weird stuff starts happening in the house. Like it's one of those things, like, you know, all little short films, and I don't want to ruin anything. But the last segment in here is awesome, and there's also a segment in here where uh, they take advantage of people how they web chat to each other, like on Skype, how they video chat each other, and like of course you see stuff in the background, or like whoa, what's what was that? You know, Amber, Amber, what's that behind you kind of stuff. You know, like they sort of did in Paranormal Activity 3. But uh, they used it to a little bit better effect in this one. But uh, I really do highly recommend this. If you guys are into uh, anth horror anthology movies and uh, found footage kind of movies, this was actually a whole hell of a lot of fun. You know, if you can get past the first, like, you know, you know 12 to 15 minutes of it. But I really, I really do enjoy it. I can't recommend it uh, more. Uh... If like I said, if you're a horror, if you're a fan of that, those kind of movies, I would suggest checking this one out. Uh, next one up here is from Sony, and that is the Men in Black Three. Uh, I've always been a, kind of a fan of the Men in Black movies. I remember watching the first one when I was like in high school, or I think I was in high school. And then part two was cool just because Rosario Dawson's in it, and I always had a crush on her, you know, ever since I seen her in Kids, and uh, of course Clerks too and stuff. And yeah, this one. It's pretty much a time travel movie. You know what I mean? It's, it's, 
there's not a whole hell of a lot of creatures. You see them, we see more of the creatures and weird like alien things in, in the beginning, like first 10, 20 minutes of the movie. And then the rest is like a time traveling movie where uh, uh, Will Smith travels back in time to, to try to uh, help Kay, his partner, from uh, getting killed by the bad guy. It's pretty much the story of this movie. And the ending of this movie is just so sweet, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of teared up just a little bit, you know what I mean? If, if you've seen it before, you know what I'm talking about. And this uh, Blu-ray DVD combo pack has a making of, ga has a gag reel, back in time music video with a uh, pit bull. Uh, Blu-ray exclusive is a uh, sp uh, Spot the Alien game, which I played for a little bit, it was kind of fun. Special features are pretty much packed on this thing. But if you're a fan of the Men in Black series and you love Will Smith, and Tommy Lee Jones and uh, sorry Josh Rowland, the guy from Goonies. This is this is definitely a, a worth worth checking out. Um, I I really did enjoy my I really did enjoy watching this one. Um, it, it it has been kind of a long time since the last one, so I was kind of like having to get back into like the characters and stuff. But I still liked it. I, I liked the the whole slipcover thing going on. The, just the nice colors on there. If you guys are into the Men in Black movies, it's now out on Blu-ray and DVD combo pack. Yeah, it was cool, man. I, I can't I can't say anything bad about that movie. And next next right here from Universal is uh, Paranorman. Um, this one right here is pretty much about a kid, Norman. Uh, he sees dead people. It's kind of like the Sixth Sense, but he's like walking down the street and he sees spirits. You know, he like talks to them, they, and the spirits talk to him. You know, he talks to the spirits, and the spirits talk to him. And the the the, the live people are looking at him like, what the hell is wrong with Norman? You know. So this pretty much the story of this movie is uh, Norman. He sees dead. Th he sees dead people, and this one guy is uh, he's like a bum, like the real creepy dude of the town, and he's trying to get. He knows Norman sees dead people just like he does, and he's trying to give Norman this book with this like spell or lullaby kind of thing, so uh, he can help. You know, he can tell Norman about what to do, or this evil is going to be unleashed, and. You know, it's pretty much uh, him trying to get to Norman, and then him passing away, and then of course his spirit, you know, comes out of his body and then goes to Norman and starts talking to him. Says, "Yo, you need to read this chant or this thing, or this evil's gonna come out." And it's pretty much them trying to stop the evil from happening. But it was actually really cool. I really do love the animation style of this. You know, the um, claymation, and uh, it's the same. It's the same people that put out Coraline, the made Coraline. I don't know. It, it's just really. I don't know, I, I think it's really cool. I just really love the look and feel of this movie. If you guys are into animation movies, this is definitely one to check out right here. Uh, next up right here from uh, Inception Media Group, and that is Creep Van. And this is this movie is a total like 80s like slasher kind of film, but made made today. And uh, it's pretty much about a, a van that goes up for sale, and it's just like it sort of lurks around the town. And it has, always has a for sale sign on it. And this one guy kind of rolls into town, you know, trying to find a job. And he gets this job at a, a car wash called Kaufman's Car Wash. And uh, Lloyd Kaufman, actually, from Troma, is in this. But you, when you watch it, you'll be like, what? It's called Kaufman's Car Wash, yet he's not the guy that owns the car wash. You know, I don't know. There's some, some, something seems really weird about that. Me and Sean were talking about that over the phone. Like, maybe he was supposed to be the guy that played the car wash owner, but then something happened last minute. But who knows? Lloyd Kaufman's the jam. I always love him, man. Ever since he was in my Night Owls movies. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like an 80s, uh, you know, uh, thriller, slasher film where, like, people get near to the van and then bad things happen to the people. Like, their heads get smushed or faces get cut off and... You know, like seatbelts choke people. Like it's it's just really cool if you guys are into like slasher films, like of the '80s. You know, like Friday the Thirteenth. You know, all that kind of stuff. You'll dig on this. You know what I mean? Like this, this, just the style of it brings me back to watching that this kind of stuff. You know, like I, I was watching this going totally, man, totally, just like this, but without like Jason and the mask guy and stuff. And of course, there's always a creepy guy driving the van, which you never really see. But it's just really cool if you're into movies like that. I know all of you guys out there watching this video are all pretty much horror fans. This one, I highly, highly suggest uh, checking out. I'm not sure if it's on Netflix or not, but if it is, guys, give this one a watch. It's really worth watching. Creep Van. Really cool special effects and stuff, too. Um, next up right here, I got from Best Buy. That's Step Up Revolution. But uh, this is the fourth one in the franchise. Uh, I know you guys are like, Brendan, really? What? I like the movie, okay? I know the story and the acting is kind of like, bleh. 
you know? It's pretty much, you just watch it for the dancing, man, you know? You know, like movies like Crush Groove and, you know, you know, Break Into Electric Boogaloo or Break In, you know, like all those cool, like, 80s movies I always loved because of the dancing. And uh, my favorite one of the franchise is number three, the one that came before this, Step Up 3, because they had this one dance uh, sequence in there. It totally feels like an old Dick Van Dyke. Uh, sequence where you know people like dancing down the street with their hats and like dancing on trash cans and stuff But this one's cool. It's pretty much you know about The people of the town trying to save their uh, little part of their town from getting uh, Destroyed by rich, you know people and developers and stuff like that, you know, it's the basic kind of story But if you're just pretty much there watching it for the dancing and the kid that plays moose in the series pops up at the very end of the movie during one of the dance sequences and that's cool because I always liked that kid from this series. I think he popped up in uh, Step Up 2 and then he was in 3 and then he's in this one. I don't think he was in the first one though. But if you guys are into uh, dancing movies, this is the one to check out. I, I highly recommend renting this one. I don't know. I, I, like, I like these dancing movies. You know? Because in my, in my head, I'm a dancer. You know, like fame. I want to live forever. You know, well, I like, I like fame too. Alright guys, enough of that craziness. Uh, next up here is the Golden Collection from Lifetime, or Gold Collection from Lifetime. And this set right here has Homeless to Harvard, Why I Whore Lipstick, Ambulance Girl and stuff. And uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's Lifetime movies, so you guys all know what's going to happen. It's kind of like that one set I talked about in my last update, The 12 Days of Christmas. And uh, I, the ones I watched on here, i already seen Homeless to Harvard before, I have it separately. But I watched the Why I, Why I Whore Lipstick. And it, I, was, I thought it was going to be a girl selling lipstick or something, you know what I mean? And then I watched it and it's pretty much about a girl that uh, finds out she has uh, breast cancer. And she has to go through getting one of her breasts removed. And when you and why the movie's called Why I Whore Lipstick is her lipstick is what gives her the will to keep going or something. It sounds kind of weird, but it, it, it's kinda, it, it kind of made me cry a little bit in the movie if you watch it. It's kind of messed up. And also, Ambulance Girl starring Kathy Bates. You guys all know her from Angus and Misery. You know, she won an Academy Award for her, or was nominated for Misery, I believe. Or, she might have won, I don't remember. But it's about a lady, she's a, her and her husband are, uh, write books about food and restaurants and stuff. Kind of like Guy Fieri and those, like, you know, Food Network shows kind of thing. But they write books. And she has all these different phobias. She can't do this, she can't do that. And then one day, she's on an airplane. And she sees this one kid, like, having, like, some sort of, like, attack. Like, he needs some sugar or he's going to pass out. So she gives him, like, a candy bar or something. And she goes, oh, I helped him out. And, you know, and then she pretty much, from there, she wants to become an uh, EMT. And it's a story about her becoming an EMT and stuff. It's, it's kind of cool. I like that one. I always like Kathy Bates. I believe she directed this one also. If you guys are into those Lifetime movies, these ones are pretty good. Especially Homeless to Harvard. I've seen before starring Th Thora Birch. This, this is a good set if you see it out there for a good price. Alright guys, and the next one right here is from Lionsgate. And that's uh, the Power Rangers Super Samurai. See, uh, the com what's it, cause it says the complete season on here. I'm not sure if it's season 1 or whatever. It says the complete season. It has uh, 20 episodes of uh, Power Rangers Super Samurai on here. On Blu-ray. And I just think it's really cool because Bulk, you know, uh, Paul Schreier from the original Power Rangers series is in this. The only thing I, I, I missed from here is uh, Jason Narvi is not playing Skull. It's some other like little kid, you know, playing the same character as Skull. And it's just kind of like, what's going on here, you know? But the it's pretty much the same thing as, Power, as, uh, as Old Power Rangers, just different cast and different monsters. You know, the same kind of monsters like people in costumes doing their thing. But it's just really cool because I always liked Power Rangers. And it's, it's Power Rangers, man. You know, but there's no Alpha... There's no, you know, Zordon. It's all, it's all, it's all flipped around a little differently. And uh, I believe the next one that comes on after this, I don't know if it's on now, but it's gonna be called Power Rangers Mega Force. When I was at Power Ranger, uh, Power, uh, Power Morphicon, sorry, uh, a couple months back, they were they showed the trailer for Mega Force. It had all the different Rangers coming together, and it, it looks so cool, you know. But this is this is also pretty pretty damn cool. I know there was a. Uh, Power Ranger Samurai. I don't know whatever happened to that. I don't know how many episodes it was because I, I didn't see it. I didn't ever saw these on TV, so I don't know what what I'm missing. It, it just sort of starts with them fighting the you know the bad people. You just don't know what happened before it. it was, it's a kids show, so it doesn't really matter. But 
Yeah, pa Super uh, Power Ranger Super Samurai: The Complete Seasons now out on Blu-ray. If you guys are Power Ranger fans, man, check it out. I I, I know I like them. I like them. It's a guilty pleasure for me, you know. Uh, these next couple up here are from uh, Wellgo USA, and this first one right here was super cool. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like the best movie ever made, but it was just really cool. It's called uh, Kill 'Em All, and this one right here stars uh, Gordon Liu. Uh, you guys all know from the Thirty Six Chambers of Shaolin, and he was in Kill Bill. But this movie is pretty much uh, about the. It's, it's a mixture between Saw and Mortal Kombat. You know what I mean? These these uh, hired assassins. Get, they all end up being thrown into this one room like Saw, like in the Saw movies. And they have to fight each other to stay alive. Like Mortal Kombat, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. They don't have like superpowers or anything like the Mortal Kombat movies. But it's like that and they have to get to the next level. And, you know, it's just, you know what I mean? Like they keep moving on. One die, you know, someone dies and they move on to the next thing. And this person has to fight that person. You know what I mean? It's really kind of cool. It's, it's kind of low budget at the same time, but it's really enjoyable if you're a martial art fan and you're into like Saw stuff. You know, we're like, not, not, not necessarily traps, but moving on to the next level. And there's like different weapons and different goons and stuff. It's really kind of fun. And I always love Gordon Liu, so I, I, I just really, really wanted to see it. But that's Kill 'em All on Blu ray. If you see it out there for a decent price or like Netflix or some sort of rental place, I really suggest checking this one out. Really, really fun one. Uh, next up, another one from Wellgo. It's called Doomsday, Doomsday Book. It's uh, from two different directors, and it has uh, three different visions. It says right here, two, di two directors, three visions of the future, uh, one mind-blowing story. It's another kind of like, sort of like an anthology film, sort of. But uh, this, there's three, like I said, they're on here, there's three different stories. The one I liked the most was the first one. It, uh, it pretty much uh, shows how uh, zombies come. In, uh, you know what I mean? How zombies are made in the future. Like, it all starts in this one guy's ha apartment, right? It's, it's really dirty. He's, like, cleaning up his apartment. He's picking up all this garbage. And there's just one apple that looks like it's, it's you know, rot rotted through. You can, like, see the insides of it and stuff. He kind of picks it up and throws it in the trash. And then, he, then you see him going outside with the trash bag, emptying out the trash into this like you know really really dirty rat infested trash can these rats are like biting at the apple you know what I mean and then you see the apple you see the process of the apple going into the trash truck and where the trash truck goes and dumps it into the dump and then the dump takes it and like you know re you know like cuts it up and makes it smaller to like recycle it and stuff and then it then that then the stuff that they that they were the trash that they recycle goes into something else goes into like hay that gets fed to a cow the cow eats the eats the you know the hay that the apple was in you know the thing, and then the cow gets slaughtered, and then it then you see the you know the cow fall, and then you see a meat slap, you know like a a big meat patty fall drop onto a plate, and then you see the same guy that was eating that apple, eat that meat, you know what I mean? So it's like it it was like all one big circle of thing for him to eat that meat, and then he eats that meat, and then he becomes infected, and then slowly he starts infecting the whole city. And I just thought that concept and how they shot that and how they edited that, that together. I know me saying it sounds kind of confusing, but when you watch the opening of this movie, it's just like, that was cool how you guys did that, you know? It's not cool how the, you, see a guy, you see a cow getting hit in the head or anything. That ain't cool. But, you know, you see, like, the process of from where the apple was in the house and how, you know, it went all this way just to come back into this one guy's body. You know what I mean? I you know I thought that was super cool. That that was the story I liked the most. And then like the whole town turns into like zombies and shit. It's just it's just really cool. That's the one I liked the most. And then there's another one on here. It's kind of like a you know like the robot in here is kind of sort of like a rip off of uh, I Robot. If you can see on the cover here, it looks just like the I Robot robot. But like I don't want to get into the other ones. But the first one was the one I loved the most. So uh, Doomsday Book. If you guys see it anywhere, check it out. Just at least for that first story. It was so cool. Uh, next up right here is uh, be, uh, Bedeviled, uh, another one from Wellgo USA. Um, it's pretty much about fr two friends, I believe, or sisters. It, it's subtitled. This one right here is subtitled, so I, sometimes I, I lose little things that that, are, that go on in it. But it's a pretty much. I don't know if it's two sisters or two friends. It's one of the two, and one lives in you know one lives in a city and one lives in this weird island. You know, like, just kind of sequestered away with these other, like, weird people that live on the island. You know, family members or friends that live on the island. And uh, the city girl, 
uh, is having trouble at work, you know, people at work are giving her problems, and, uh, she, she, like, ends up witnessing, like, a crime, and, and she's just like, oh, Jesus Christ, and she, like, leaves the police station, and the, the bad guys that she didn't identify because she's too scared to do it, and are, like, giving her problems, she's like, oh, shit, I just gotta get away from this, so she gets on the next boat over to that, you know, the weird island where her, uh, old friend is, so, you know, to spend, to spend some time away from where she lives, and then she goes to this town, and you come to find out, in this town, the men rule. You know what I mean? The women have to do all the work. You know, if they, you know, if the men want to have sex, and the girl and ladies don't want to, but the man wants it, you got to do it. But it's just really kind of messed up, and it just shows the, you know, her friend or whatever, just slowly starts going, you know, going crazy, in this town. You know, getting, you know, having, you know, getting raped by these different people. Different guys in the town, and no one giving it, no one giving a shit with, about what's going on. She and this other lady, you know, the lady has a daughter, and then later on in the movie, you see like the men of the town looking at the daughter, going like, mm hmm, and the lady's like, oh hell no, you're not doing that to my daughter, you know. And of course, when she stands up to it, something bad happens, and then you know, you watch the movie, and it's slowly, it's, the movie slowly, like turns into like a I spit on your grave kind of movie, like a revenge kind of thing. It's really kind of cool and interesting. Uh, the scenery of this movie is amazing, you know, the, the little island that they're on, like, you know, the way they shot it, and this, like, the water, and the, it's the whole scenery of it, it's really cool. But, uh, I really recommend it if you like I Spit on Your Grave kind of movies, it's really kind of cool. You know, like, you see the progression of this one lady that's been on the island so long, and all this bad stuff starting, starts to happen, you know, happens to her through all this time, she's just like, oh, hell no, this is not happening to my daughter. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I like it. I like it. I recommend checking this one out. Uh, yeah, Bedeviled. This next one right here is uh, from Cult Epics. And that is uh, Betty Page, Dark Angel. If you guys don't know who Betty Page is, she was like a, uh, one of the most popular pinup girls in like the 50s. The 50s and 60s, I believe. And uh, if you guys don't know what a pinup girl is, the, it's like Playboy kind of thing. And uh, this movie right here is pretty much like a biopic. Uh, people, you know, following her life and what she did, it's, it's not a very, it's, it's not a very good movie at all, um, I, I, I found myself fast forwarding a lot going, oh, okay, the acting was kind of like, oh, geez, you know what I mean, but the thing I found fascinating about this, because I, uh, I always knew Betty Page's name from, like, other stuff, but, uh, there's, like, a lot of cool special features on this thing, like, there's one right here called, uh, they have old, old vintage, uh, Betty Page uh, videos uh, on here from the 1951 19, through 1956, like old vintage, like you know, uh, erotic things that she did that they reenacted in the the movie here. And there's also a thing in here, In Search of Betty Page, uh, by by Nico B, the director of of the film right here. And I found that to be more entertaining than the actual movie of this. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty much him. Like, back then, back in 1993, with old VHS cameras, like, you can see, like, the quality of the t of the videos, like, totally VHS with the little squiggly lines and stuff, going to, like, different places, going, do you know Betty Page? You know, because she was, a, I guess she was alive in that time, and trying to find her so he could, like, interview her or talk to her or whatever. And uh, he, he finds, like, one of the, it's, like, ten minutes long, but he, he's, like, going to, like, different video stores, talking to other people that know Betty Page. It's kind of like, um, in this, like, what's, it, what's that one, what's that one movie called? Like, Searching for John Hughes, you know, that documentary where, like, these young, uh, filmmakers are super fans of John Hughes, go, try to go out and find John Hughes, kind of thing. It's kind of like that, but in, like, a 10 or 12 minute, uh, special feature in this. It was kind of cool. You know, I, that's what I found more fascinating than anything else on this, uh, Blu-ray right here. The movie is kind of, eh, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie, but if you really like Betty Page, I, I see, you might like it. It, it, it's cool, you know what I mean, the special features wise, but yeah, that's Betty Page, Dark Angel. Uh, next up right here is uh, from Lifetime, and uh, it's a Dean Martin Christmas show. Um, if you guys all, you guys all know Dean Martin, he's from the Rat Pack, I mean, yeah, the Rat Pack, sorry, I almost said Brat Pack in my head, you know, from like the 80s, but the Rat Pack, you know, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. and stuff like that, and uh, Frank Sinatra. Dean Martin had his own variety show. And uh, this is his Christmas special, and it has people like Dom DeLuise and uh, Jimmy Stewart, uh, Lucille Ball, George Burns on there. There's like a, a lot of like different cameos on this. Dom DeLuise is in a lot of the segments, and Bob Newhart is in here. 
it's just pretty much them like putting on little skits, uh, you know what I mean, skits and like uh, holiday songs, like people singing like, oh what a wonderful Christmas, you know what I mean, kind of thing as like Dean Martin's in there laughing or smoking a cigarette. If you guys are into this, into like old, uh, you know, comedy specials, this is, this was kind of fun, you know what I mean, from Time Life, I suggest checking this one out if you see it. For a, a decent price, like 10 bucks or less. It, it was pretty cool. It's only 48, 48 minutes long. It's, it's cool, you know. Uh, next up right here. Um, I bought during Black Friday. And I told you I was saving it for this update so I could talk about it. And that is Danny is Danny Trejo and Badass. And uh, Danny Trejo's cool, okay. And in this movie, he plays a, a, a old war veteran, I believe. And um, one day... You know, he he just he's just having a hard a hard a hard life, right? He, nothing for him is really going right. His business his business has kind of failed him, and he's on this bus one day, and these like thugs are on the bus picking on this old black man, and he's like, "Yo, man, stop it!" You know, and these guys are like, "What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do?" And then Danny Trejo just kind of like beats the beats the living shit out of him, and then someone on the bus, of course, is videotaping it and putting it on the internet or YouTube or whatever. And he becomes like a viral sensation. So people around the town know, know him as badass. And then I like, guess it's just pretty much him trying, later on in the movie, his, something happens to one of his friends and he's trying to find out who did that, you know, who, what happened to his friend and who did that to his friend kind of thing. And uh, the bad guy of this movie is played by Charles Dutton. Or one of the bad guys is played by Charles Dutton. I always really liked, liked Charles Dutton from uh, the, the, his show that he had called Rock. He was in Nick of Time. It really, it's, it's just really, really a fun movie. I really, really dug this one. If you guys see it out there, like I said, for a good price, please, please, please check this one out. This one has the wet movie stamp of approval on it. Uh, next up right here is a Mill Creek title I picked up on, on Black Friday for four bucks off Amazon. And that is uh, The Fatherhood and Life with Mikey Double Pack. Um, I, I like Fatherhood. I haven't watched it in a while, so I can't say anything about it. I had it on VHS and DVD and stuff, but Life with Mikey, I wanted to get it for uh, starring, you know, Michael J. Fox, one of my favorite actors, uh, of course, Back to the Future, blah, 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 all this other stuff, and it's pretty much him, He's, he was a child star uh, back in, like, the 60s or whatever, you know, kind of like Leave it to Beaver kind of style, and now his career has kind of went nowhere, and now him and his brother are, are running this uh, uh, talent agency for, like, for kids, like, getting him, trying to get him commercials, acting gigs, and movies, and uh, it's, it's really going kind of bad, like they're pretty much going to close their doors soon. And uh, Michael J. Fox's character is walking down the street one day and bumps into this little girl. The little girl pickpockets him. And, uh, you know what I mean? He starts up, he kind of like, you have to watch it. He starts up a relationship with her. He puts her, in a he puts her in a commercial and then things start going good. It's really a funny, sweet movie. Love the music. They don't make movies like this anymore. You know, it's one of those movies I, I always love revisiting. It's always really funny. Life with Mikey, if you guys ever have, if you guys have ever seen it, leave a comment in below letting me know what you guys thought about Life with Mikey because it's it's just a sweet little family film, you know? Uh, right, next up is another one I missed uh, in my Black Friday haul video. I don't know how. I had it, but I just didn't show it because I, I, I think I, missed, I put it on a different shelf or something. But it was on sale for, I believe, $7.99 or $9.99 on Black Friday. And it's always that's it's always sunny in Philadelphia season six. I, I, it's a very very funny show. Danny DeVito is one of my favorite like actors. I always like watching in anything like Get Shorty, Taxi, the old TV show, Ma Matilda. You know the awesome stuff. But that's season six. I know season seven's out. But next next Black Friday, most likely season seven will be as cheap as this one was. You know. So yeah, that's season six of oh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I also, I talked about these in a hoarding up video, and uh, I got a handful of you guys asking me what I thought about it, okay? I picked up Dexter season 1 and 2. I still haven't opened season 2 yet. I've only watched two episodes so far of season 1. You know what I mean? It's kind of it's kind of cool in the concept about, you know, him trying to find killers. You know, he's a killer himself, yet he's trying to find the serial killer that's killing all these people in the town. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really crazy. It's a, it's a great concept. I'm still trying to get into it more. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not just like, ooh, what's the next one? What's the next? Ooh, gotta watch the next episode kind of thing. I don't, I can't say I hate it yet, though, either. So, uh, I still have those. I got these ones. So, for you guys that have been asking me, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, that's, that's my thoughts on it so far. Not bad, 
but just hasn't hooked me yet. And last stuff right here, you guys saw me unbox it in my daily vlog channel. If you guys haven't subscribed to my, uh, my daily vlog, I do a video every day on this channel. Check out the link right on the, you know, this, in the description box right underneath the video. And you'll see my video. So go ahead and subscribe to that if you guys want to see a daily dose of me. I unbox this over there. It was on sale on Amazon on Cyber Monday for $99. And right now on Amazon, it's like 330 something, or like something like some outrageous price. But that is the Bond uh, Blu-ray collection, bl the Bond 50. It has all the James Bond movies in there. It even has a space in here for Skyfall when it comes out. Like I could buy the Blu-ray and just like take the disc and put it in there. You know, that's that's just kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't watched any of these yet. But uh, yeah, man, the ones I remember, the ones I grew up with, you know, like GoldenEye. And uh, Pier the Pierce Brosnan ones, because GoldenEye is the one I, I remember first seeing and really liking. Like there's one thing, there's like a plane going down, someone's stuck in the plane and he's just like jumping down and trying to save the person. That's the thing that always sticks out in my mind. But this is a killer set and I got it for a killer deal. So I, I, I saw that, I had to pick it, I just had to get it, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I wasn't even thinking, I was like, click, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> like a good hoarder should. But uh, yeah, guys, that's my uh, DVD Blu-ray collection update for today or this week. And I'll see you guys all in my next one. And please, guys, go check out my daily vlog channel. Link in the description box. I really appreciate your support over there. And uh, I'll see you guys all next time for my next one. Bye, guys.